Hi guys, this is Large Punnett with Top Tier Tiers. We're back with yet another set overview. Uh, this one we're covering is uh, Fujimi Fantasia Bunker, which is one of those, uh, uh, what do you call it, omnibus sets, which has a bunch of cards yeah. with a bunch of formats. Uh, it makes it Fujimi. really hard <laughs> to review yeah. the set because... Oh, God. Um, the order in which they uh, have cards on the various aggregator translator sites uh. is is based on the... <laughs> Uh, set code, which varies tremendously, and that was just a pain. Um, I don't think it's their fault. For... Like, no, it's not. I feel like it would make... I, I blame Bush Road primarily, I think, because it's it would make it's way more problem. sense it would make way more sense if the set were ordered, numbered based on the series. Like, they could have easily just made it so all the cards from the same series in each color are, like, numbered in order, right? But they didn't do that. Hmm. Well, the other reason is future proofing, right? In case they release, you know, a data live set or a, a zombie set or something. Oh, anyway, very likely. <laughs> we um, we are trying out another new format. Last time we just talked about best cards that go into an existing deck. Fate. This time, there is only one deck in Fujimi that is worth its salt, which is the eight standby deck. So we're going to briefly cover a few of the cards that are noteworthy outside of the standby deck, and then talk about some of the standby deck cards how um how they're good and basically why the deck is good at all. I don't think the deck is quite as good as it was a few months ago, but um it's it's still floating around and people still enjoy playing it because they enjoy playing eight standby decks. And as far as eight standby goes, or field based eight standby, I think Kujimi is still one of the ones. Um simply because it's consistent, it has tools to beat up a standby decks and does it does what it does. So I guess we um, without any further ado, we'll skip past all of these uh, introductory things and get to the yellow cards. Unless yeah. there's something else you want to talk about. No. So uh. these cards are, you know, these these cards are roughly they're not ordered in terms of good or they are or whatever. They're just yellow cards that are fine. Uh, the first yellow card is one that probably goes in every Fujimi deck that can afford to play it and can play it. Um, this is Impenetrable Interval. It's a 3-4 Korawa Zombie Desk card. It has a counter text, um, and it's an event, so evidently something's up. These cards be on the list. It says, choose up to two of your opponent's characters and they get neg two soul. Then send this to them. So, it's a strong card. It's Basically, like, what it seems like on the box, yeah. honestly. It's a very straightforward card. Uh, the obvious criticism is if the opponent, for example, plays triple two soul beta, plays a climax, this is nowhere near as effective as it could be. It's still, uh, very, it's still is, pretty effective, I think. It's it's fine. It mitigates damage to a minimum so you can heal down. I think it usually also, means you live that turn, even if they have. Unless, like, yeah. Their, yeah, it's... I'm, their finishing combo is, like, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, probably of course. And um, in the context of Fujimi standby specifically, this is kind of like a pay for ditch one, stand your whole field. If you want to. Uh, one. yeah. That's that it's is a, an all right um, way of putting it. It's a really, it's a really dumb way to think of it, but basically it means you live this next turn, and therefore you get a you get another chance to do stuff, which is pretty powerful. Um, the other thing about this is it's a lot weaker if you field, but Fujimi specifically has very little difficulty doing that. Yeah, it is built to win board um, on both both sides board. Yes. Very it can very be a soundly. bit problematic if you are playing against, for example, the new Saikano deck, which just runs you over regardless and uh, stalls out better than you. And it can be a little problematic against well, against certain decks like Fate, for example, which don't aim you immediately instead I try to grind you out this is worse against those decks but not much because oftentimes it's it's enough to just delay them by another turn at which point you get a chance to swing at them and maybe they die uh, I do think this is a really solid card but it's costed in a prohibitive way so you need to play a deck specifically designed to sustain prohibitive costs and the standby yes. deck is if you're fed during early level 2 and level 3, then it is one of those decks that can sustain. You're getting a bunch of 2 costs free, 
they'll sustain your board, they'll give you pluses. They you just sit there and be dicks. I, yeah. I, I think um... this is just a really solid card. I don't think you can build a deck on it or anything. But if the deck's already there, and then this makes sense as a top end, especially if you don't have particularly explosive things. And Fujimi has a few finishes, but none of them in the vein of the million live cards or uh, Mikasa or Coco Chino, basically. I don't think. It's a grindy deck, and this is a grind. Yeah. Next card. Uh, Haruna Sundarim Maso Sojo. I'm not saying that's out. Magic cool. It's a free two. It Sorry. is a free two. <laughs> a three two heal to stock. So you come come and play. You can top five stock. And it's got a climax combo. When it attacks, if you daily nonsense, uh, the climax pay three to deal four. Now we've been talking about eight standby. We, this climax combo is not playable. Just X. But outside of those decks, I mean, it's a serviceable top. Oh, I'm cutting out again. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we've been talking about it standby, but uh, this is not a standby climax. So evidently, this is not the top end in that deck. But um, in decks other than that, and the yellow deck specifically actually has... Um, it has... Uh, a pseudo Kome type card which can get climaxes. Um, that can make the consistency of a combo like this a lot better. That being said, this is played in the standby deck um, just because it heals to stock. That deck will frequently find it has um, you know, plenty of hand, so this is not really an issue. You get to play it and it's fine. Um, it is still only a role player type card, so I'm giving it a C plus and agree so the combo much is, to say. I feel like the combo just doesn't exist well For the combo is fine it's, it's just not good like if, if you're if you're playing the zombie deck play it there's not much you can do about that <laughs> but you can't even no, you, well, like we it, just it it the, does have enough the event is the event is a zombie card too right you can't play that yeah, card is. and this card yeah but you can choose one or the other right like it would go in the deck regardless uh, Sometimes you just want to kill enough. them dead. Like, people do play single series decks, like Data Live, this one. Um, I, I guess uh, Seiro Kainoichi is on. And I guess Amaburi. And yeah, a few sets have enough to me. And this um, Korean Zombie has two, um, two climax combos, so it can. Mm. Anyway, let's move on to a, you know, a better card. Uh, this is this is definitely not oh, sure. This is not. So, um, this okay. is a uh, Oda Nobuna or whatever her name is. Um, she is a zero zero one five gives one k to itself on your turn, and when you play it from hand to stage, you can ditch three. If you do, you can stock swap your opponent. So you put all of their stock in the waiting room, and then they put the same number of cards from the top of the deck into stock. I don't think we've talked about stock swap recently on this on the cast, to be honest. But um, mm, we talked about it a little bit with the fate stuff. We kind of we kind of touched on it, but in the same line that um the fate one is powerful, it's powerful here because the deck it goes in the standby deck is a grindy deck, and you want to make sure that your opponent can't out grind you. So if their compression ever looks like it's getting to be pretty impressive, then stock wash will uh, stock swap rather will force them to. Use all their stock or risk all of their compression being lost. And I, mean, they, I think they just lose their compression. <laughs> I, I agree. They just lose their compression. <laughs> uh, um, it really puts pressure. Well, it really just puts pressure on your opponent to do certain things. Uh, yeah, like in spend certain stock situations. Mean, really. Yeah, or just like mill, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It it also well, accelerates. It there. like accelerates their game plan. Like, or their it accelerates their um, game pace because they essentially. Once this card is played, uh, their next deck is gonna be just garbage, for sure. Yeah. So they have to. So they win have to like they have to basically lucky. win within however long they have in this current deck, and you know a lot of people will see cards like this, uh, or effects like this, and just kind of mill. 
to make sure that mm -hmm. they have a little bit more time to try and get the win. Yeah. So the mere existence of this card simply means they can't build compression meaningfully, which is really important. Um, again, it, like when you're playing a deck like Fujimi, which is a bit of a grindy deck. Uh, this uh, being a character you, is also really good. It's really good. Yeah, because yeah, you can salvage good. it. You can get it off a number of effects. Like it's just a really strong card in general. Uh, I think I... that uh, all things go. considered, yeah, this might actually be one of the strongest stock swap profiles in the game on a level zero. Uh, uh yeah, are, are there that many? There aren't that many. Is this the no, only? No, there one? aren't. But like, I think this might be a. I think there's one more. There's a there's a yeah, three well, two whatever. from Sal. That's a three two. But this one is just a double zero. Yeah, yeah, but um, this one being the way it is is just super strong. If you need to stock swap them at one, for example, against Love Live, or against um a Fed Konosuba, for example, then you can do it. It might cost you a bunch, but it'll cost them even more. Um. I don't recommend it against Konosuba specifically, but uh, you can do it if you have to. Uh, yeah, it's just a super strong profile. I think any deck would be willing to play. And um, yeah, I'm going to give it a reasonably high grade. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Our next card. Uh, Hanbei, Yin Yang Master. She's a 001k. During your turn, everything gets 500 power, and then it has a bit of an Amagi profile. When you play a Climax card to Climax Zone, you may pay the cost. We'll talk about the cost in a sec. If you do, uh, look up the four cards from the top of your deck, add one level one or higher card to your hand you find there, and then ditch the rest. Now, the cost is clocking yourself. How good is that? I think it's pretty good. I think early on, this is just it's like, good, right? I, uh, I agree. I mean, it's... it's uh... But we don't really, we don't often see plusing effects like this. They're just mm. as free as this, right? Even Ricky itself costs a stock. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, especially so, like, especially if, like, you know, the card you get off this leads to more pluses later, it can be quite the powerful uh, snowball you know, starter. Especially in a deck like, in, in like a standby deck. Which this is usually seen in, where you end up yeah. like, yeah, like, look, imagine if you get like, I don't know, like counter off this, or an important game like. That's a, I mean, that's a good point, but that's a really big cost as well, right? Like, uh, you can't use this more than like once a game that's true. without I mean, really. I think it, but I think it's good enough. I think the impact is high enough that you that this is just like fine. Yeah, like, yeah, like I good. I don't disagree. Like this being it drawn early, yeah. and being played with your first standby climax, for example, is actually yeah. You can um, use this level zero that... notably, which is like yeah. But do you want to use this at level zero though? Um, I don't. I don't think Fujimi wants not. to play climaxes at levels. Uh, that's they'll be using this at level one. Uh, yes, uh, that's that's probably true. Um, using this at like one zero, however, is. Fine, there's nothing wrong good. with that. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like the ideal time to play it, honestly. It's actually um it's actually good that this is uh you know, it doesn't have to be in the back row or anything, because yeah. on that turn you're probably chump attacking with some idiots and stand buying out. So once you've gotten past that particular hump, this card has done its job and you'll hopefully have a stable lane and maybe you can get a second stable lane. Yeah, that's really good. Uh my initial other concern with this card is the selectivity, but um uh, I think I still think, I think that's kind fine. of an issue, but I mean it's only so it's, it's a one-time thing. You're not going to be doing it over and over, so that's true. Accordingly, um, the sele selectivity is not going to matter that much. You only it's kind of like you know a crystal effect. The selectivity is not great, but once it's done its job, it's done its job. It's fair enough. You've gotten you've gotten a card, yeah. and that's what this card just lets um, you sustain. It gives you like that extra bit of card advantage. Help you sustain for longer. I think I think this is much much better in a global soul deck for whatever that's worth. Um, but um, maybe problem maybe. Uh, I think so. I think standby decks really do need some kind of card like this. It, we it's notable that most of the standby decks we see have some form of this profile. Mm. Like Sal has one that's very prominent, prominently played. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But those ones uh, don't. Central hit Gear those. also has one. They don't hit you though. Those ones are really repeatable, and that's really you know that's, a strength. Yeah, deck. that's true. Because you don't uh, you don't clock. This, this is a different beast than the uh, yeah stock costed Amagis for sure. Yeah, this gives you a bit of extra stock to spend elsewhere. You might be right about such the, as on. You you might be right about yeah. it being better in a global soul deck, especially if it's yeah, a like, like stock soul deck. Whew. I mean, what what this effectively does is it gives you stock to spend on hard playing a one one or a or a two or a two or a two two or something or if need be. Or yeah, um, or it gives you a brainstorm uh, stock, which is fine. I think that's totally reasonable, but I don't think it's fair to compare it to an Amagi, you know, an Sao or Simpo Gear, because I think that they're different card roles, despite the ability looking so similar. Mm. Simply because you can't, you just can't repeat this. Or if you do repeat it, you're living very well, dangerous. I do feel like some part of an Amagi's role early on in a standby deck is to provide some sort of ability to snowball off like yeah, yeah, the initial yeah. like That's... surge of resources and then that like becomes you know it just you usually keep the cards you draw and the cards you get randomly in a standby deck in your hand and then like yeah, yeah. the resources you spend resources to kind of sustain your board mostly uh, yeah, yeah. So once you once you've got a board presence established, you don't need to use this yeah. necessarily. This, but you do need advantage somewhere. Like you, this deck brainstorm, for example, and Sao and uh, and other standby decks have uh, their Amagis or Sal uh, has Sal's. I think Sal's engine is particularly gross, but uh... Sal in would like, uh, yeah, yeah. Sal's version is much better than this. I think. Uh, it's it's just that card. That deck never good. lacks for cards in hand. Um, yeah, yeah. Of this course. card, uh, it's good. It's fine. I think it's good. Yeah, it's totally fine. I um, I would need to play it a lot more in a global soul deck to make a comment on that. But I think that it's pretty evident that standby decks are not. Uh, they're they're reluctant to use this more than once. Also, like mill. That's also an important part about Amagis in standby lists. Yeah, you, you know, it's like slightly five, more mill. Yeah. yeah. Get to the second deck. Just well, all, you get create. And, you get to create more standby targets before you use the um, standby effect as well. And also, you don't have to pay stock. So if that stock isn't a climax, that's sort nice. of a compression. Pretty nice. All, all right. right. Next card, significantly more mediocre, which is a really mean thing to say about this skill. Uh, this is Tycho, top honor students. I'm sure it is. Uh, come and play mill 2, there's a climax there, you gain 2 soul for the turn, and when this attacks, give another character 1k. So, on turn 1, this can be a mill 2, and if you hit a climax, congratulations, you're swinging for 4 or more. And I think we've discussed this already, but swinging for that much damage on turn 1 hasn't really got any downsides. If your opponent fails to level, then, you know, whatever, they failed to level. Um, that can be good. It's as if, yeah, as if a, they, um... Especially in, like, a standby... List. Yeah, it slows the game down. Yeah. Uh, and if and if the damage sticks, then it can often make your opponent start going a little bit more nuts. They are they need to because they're playing with a significant damage deficit already, so they're going to try to either rush and they're not ready for it, or they're going to need to be a bit more lucky. And in a standby deck specifically, if they take the latter path, then that's the standby's absolute. There's just no downside to standby. I think this card is really, really whatever in a more conventional deck because uh, this set has got multiple good plussing options and most decks care more about pluses than about damage, um, the damage race like Standby does. There's a 004k, for example, which is in yellow as well. There's a runner um, and there's a green card that we can talk about in a sec, which I don't actually think is very good, but hey, we can do what we talk about. And there's even a clean cut. Uh, so I don't think this card is actually... I think that if you play this card, you are knowingly accepting this card is never going to get you meaningful advantage uh, in a conventional sense. It's the perfect filler card if you need yellow. I mean, even reason. if I needed yellow, I feel like I just play more of the 
stock uh, spot movement. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, probably, but... I, I wouldn't fault anyone for playing this card unless they were specifically taking out better cards to play it. Don't underrate mm -hmm. an effect like this. The turn the turn one for Soul Swing can be great. And the fact that it can just pump something is also fine, especially because this this set has a bunch of combos we're not going to talk about. It has it has the normal Shimakaze combo and on reverse search. It has a on reverse stock charge and give power. And it even has an on reverse check top four add. It has a lot of on reverse shit. So if that's what you're looking for, this card is not your worst option. I think there are better options. There are cards that do more and give you more power, but this is not a, a complete joke. To me. So, but don't overrate this card either. It's, it doesn't plus only has, a, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a 30, 40% shot. Not even that. It's probably like less than that to uh, get a real meaningful swing on turn one. And while it does mill two, you can find other cards that mill and they'll probably be as effective or more effective. I also like that this card pumps power. Like a nice... Yeah, it's... A, other reason I, this card could exist in a deck. Yeah, it's like, I think that's probably the... If you need the power pump, and you think you're okay without the other power pumpers, which I don't think we talk about here, but whatever, then... um. This is a fine choice, I guess. It also oh, fits yellow. Is there another power pump? Oh, uh, there are multiple. There's like a, the three mascots, I think, does that as well. Um, um Amaburi. Let me just check. Um, oh, I think I know. Okay, okay. Yeah, so there's a um, mascots. All right, we can talk about, well, the, I think the one one is notable. But... Um, never mind. It's not the mascots. There's a, there is there is something that gives one five, I forget. There is. Um, pretty sure, yeah, it's a blue card. Um, but the downside is it's a two five blue card. The downside is when it dies, the opponent gets to draw deep. Mm. Uh, but presumably, but like presumably, you've gotten your power off it anyway. Um, yeah, maybe this is the best choice. I don't know. Amiku is probably better. Um, Miku, the one, the one, one. Yeah, as a power pump. Yeah, yeah, it pumps a huge amount of power, but it also costs stock. Like to play it down, it's a one, one. You can tap it and give something two five, but it's still a one, one. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's just move on. I'm sure yeah. we'll, we talk about the Miku later. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Lots of green cards. So, yeah, there aren't actually very many that we want to talk about. But um, uh, these cards the that... are more of like a, <laughs> uh, they're not very good, and we're gonna tell you why. Uh, I try we tried to choose cards that I think could be kind of instructive as to why they're not very good. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, this card, this first card actually has an insane ceiling. So Oka, reason for isolation. You play it from hand to stage. If your opponent only has one character in their front row. You can give it neg 3k power, which will basically kill, kill, kill all runners, and, and all o oversizes will probably die as well. That's, yeah. Um, this is only 500 power, granted, but if you have anything with any amount of power, it will kill the oversize. So yeah. this is specifically like a level 0 assassin type card against people going on to 1. As soon as they hit turn 2, they're probably attacking with 1. And if those characters aren't specifically bombs, and then sometimes even if they are bombs, they're not going to have one character. So going first, uh, sorry, going second on turn one, this is one of the best cards you can play if your goal is to mess with your opponent as opposed to plus. Goblin Slayer counter. Now, yes, it is a <laughs> counter Slayer, actually. Uh, this also has a second line of text. When it attacks, if you have one or few other characters, you can mill one. If that was a level zero character, put it in the slot in the back row. So the incredible why would they print such a broken card case is going second, turn one, you play, you know, some random card, and then you play this, and then this kills their runner, 
And then when you attack with this, you hit like a Brainstorm or, an or a Chizuru or... or a Magi or any of these cards that don't have like come and play effects you care too much about. And then you've plussed, you've stopped your opponent plussing, and you have a body to you know, serve that's, as a ball walk for damage. That's which is, funny. You know, if you mill the hmm. Amagi, this becomes a 1k power. Yeah, so you get to kill, um, uh, you get to pretty, kill three fives. It's pretty sick play. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the problem is that's not going to happen ever. <clears throat> We've already talked about how as soon as they hit turn two, most players who aren't having a bad game will have two characters in the front row and they'll probably survive. And if you're going first, then if your opponent played only one card, great. But a lot of decks these days are designed not to do that, and some decks even try field that early. Not very few of them, but certainly some. So decks like Fate can do it, decks like uh, Saikano can do it, uh, Rewrite. Like lots of decks have the ability to do that without a massive problem. And of course, the second ability is very luck based. Uh, even if you have some way to manipulate top deck, like, you know, check top two, rearrange, or scry two, put on top or bottom, even with those effects, this is still extremely luck based and not selective and not a powerful ability overall. But when you put it all together, it's a card that if it was on the other side of the table from me, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mock it. But I also would not be afraid because chances are it's not going to do anything. Mm. What do you think? Um, what do you think about this effect? Well, I mean, or... I, I think I've talked. I think I've talked about how the effect can be insane. It's just if you if your opponent like killed your runner after playing this card, how would you feel about that? Uh, pretty upsetting, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, it sucks. would be a bit upsetting. <laughs> that sucks. Mostly because I'm not expecting this card yeah. uh, anymore. As soon as they print, uh, they're they're definitely trying to make this profile better, for sure. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, eventually they're gonna print one of these cards with like an obscene alternate utility effect. It's gonna be yeah. Really what if annoying. it was like a on reverse Reze or something? Mm. Yeah, so um, I'm only giving mm. it a seat. I don't think it's a super good card. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on before it gets too long. Uh, Isuzu, deputy manager. Sard is good. Um, this is a three-two early play. There are two or fewer climax cards in waiting room, and um, it has you have uh, it's 11k if you have you know a field. And when you play this from hand to stage, check the top card of your deck. If it is a character with either of these traits, then this gains clock. So it's an early play clock kick. So this is interesting in that we don't see too much early play removal. Um, it's it's a bit more prominent uh, with uh, cards like the level uh, the level three Ellie early play and level I've seen play, mm. uh, as as well as um, cards like. Uh, the Saikano early play, giving a large amount of power. There, there are some cards which do that, but nothing hard removes quite as... like It's 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 never quite as obvious as this sort of... This card can be treated as a 11k clock kick at level 3, but it can also just be treated as an 11k early play that gave you a bit of extra damage at level 2. And sometimes, if you have or some sort of support and they're caught off guard, you might even be able to remove a standby target or something. That's that would be that would be pretty cool. I don't think you would be able to because eleven K isn't quite big enough. But if for example you have the one one Miku which gets this the thirteen five, um and they're still level one, so they're stuck on um not very much in terms of counter power. This does just get rid of their standby target and makes this like this costs nothing additional. You don't have Dude, to ditch a card or anything. Dude, you this with the Yeah, well, I mean that would cost a lot additional, <laughs> and <laughs> that seems very, very, very poor in terms of resource management. But um, but we're not. We are talking yeah. about uh, if the removal. Okay, this this is not. That's not actually a play because it's so costly. But yeah. 
Um, it's it's an eleven k EP that sometimes will remove something that they care about, and it will remove it in a way that it can't be you know, revived very easily. Uh, it is also just an eleven k clock kick for the end game, so yeah, it's free too. Yeah, it doesn't have any heal. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't heal. It doesn't like have a cantrip or anything, but it's remarkably low resource for what it does, and I um I appreciate that. It's it's fine. Now the other thing I should note is that the um the Fantasia decks tend to play some number of events, so you've got a higher than normal fail rate, especially if you play it late game when you're somewhat compressed. But um. I, I kind of like the card. It's fine. Yeah. Cool too. And you can totally see how um how the the uh, art styles have changed from era to era. This yeah. is uh, Konami. Uh, like this makes you think of like Inuyasha, uh, early two thousands anime. It's um Konami, um, Jindai Municipal High School Girl is a two K. This is simply a Ricky type. When it dies, you can pay one card to your deck. If you do, search your deck for a cost zero or lower card with the same um, level as you or lower and put it in any slot. Rested? This is, yes, rested. So this is not actually very useful um, for the standby deck for fairly obvious reasons. You can use this to fix the green if you're splashing Isuzu or something. And then you can pull out you know, a Brainstorm or an Amagi or whatever. Um, but in other decks, this can... Uh, like, the play pattern is something like turn one, do something. Turn two, play this, attack with it. And then hopefully your opponent hits you to level one. And then at that point, you can now get a one zero as opposed to needing to get a level zero. So that play pattern is uh, kind of cool. I don't think this is a particularly strong card, all things considered. Um, it, it gets you your Climax combo, but it doesn't get it with perfect reliability. And say, for example, your opponent wipes your field, but you also cancel, and you get stuck at like 0-5 or something. This is just remarkably inferior to uh, a regular Ricky or something. So, while I appreciate that this is a plusing card, and I'm going to give it a grade in accordance with it, I think that it has significant drawbacks that prevent me from giving it, like, a really good rating. It's funny that they had to make the card that comes in rested, because otherwise, you could, uh... It's like a... You could, like, uh, I mean... A, you could, like, play... You could get a level 1 card out at level 0 the turn you play this, and then... Um, no, uh, you attack. can't. What? If, if, this, if this didn't rest the card... You can't get a level one out. It has to be equal or lower. Than oh, that. sorry. Oh. Uh, Otherwise, you're thinking, you're thinking you could like play over. Sorry, or sorry. Um, there's some interaction that convinced me that it made sense for this card to rest the card. Oh. Oh, I mean, it's just in case this, for example, you played in standard with an on attack sack or whatever, that stops it from being a restand. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. It's that's, not a very. Yes. It's, it's it's not good, but I mean that's the <laughs> thing, that's right? That's pretty funny. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like imagine. Oh well, man. Let's let's not imagine that. It's just it's like whatever. This is just a plusing card, in the context of Fujimi, and I don't. I think you have better options. I agree. Like All the right. Amagi. But, if, if you... Yeah. Here's a meme. Let's. Let's talk about a sick card. So this is the Air X8 uh, <laughs> lever team. Um, this is a 2125, so obviously something's up. If it has any markers, it gets 85 power, so it goes to 11k, and it gets um, a continuous effect to nullify damage from your opponent character's auto abilities. So that means as soon as they declare an attack, you no longer are affected by burns, which is, you know, it's actually kind of sick. Now, in order to get a marker, you need to get Sosuke, Corsair, Urzu 7, which is um, a 1 0 uh, on attack gain, like 2k no, or 2k. It's on play. It's on play. It's on play. On play, oh, whatever. Yeah. On, on play, gain some amount of power, and put it underneath this as a marker. So it's the pilot, which is, you know, it's sweet flavor. 
Uh, and that makes it into an 11k that has anti-burn, um, all sorts of anti-burn by default. Is this worth playing? Uh, the problem with this no. is the problem with this is evidently you need to play four of it and then four to have it. Like if you want to multi-lane this with any sort of reliability, then you very clearly need to have a lot of these. And uh, that's just something that I don't think people are willing to do outside of the Full Metal Panic deck. I, I don't actually think you have enough cards to make an entire FMP deck, but <laughs> yeah, you can do what you want. In FMP specifically, this is your level two, and it's probably pretty sick. Like, it probably just runs over most things. But outside of that, I don't think it's very good. It's like a... It's a neat prototype, I think. As, as far as high deck construction cost cards go, this is definitely not the worst one I've ever seen. Can you miss a C plus? Yeah, man. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, man. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what this one do. You can give it whatever you want. You want to give it an uh... F? You give it an F. That is not something that matters to me. But all right, all it, right, if right, I'm, good. if I'm, look, say I'm playing against, I don't know, like a hybrid green, red, blue, Fujini deck. And then at, as I, like, I see the Sosuke at level uh, one, I think. Oh, that's kind of cute. It's like, uh, a, uh, <laughs> and, and then at level two, they slam three of this against me. No. And I'm just, I'm just sitting there looking at them. Uh, and then. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Kill them. Uh, they they are pretty big, and they only cost one, and they might 11K. kill your EPs. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, they're... I, I think <sighs> that they're better than you give them credit for, but that's your opinion. I've got my opinion. I am... Uh, I definitely... For example, I think it's a much better card than the level zero that we are get, both gave C's to. The, the one that make 3 k something. Mm. All right, you know what? Fine, it's a C minus or something. But I, I just okay, uh... dude. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. It's fine. Like evidently, this is a card with an enormous deck view of building cost, and the level one is not a good card, and this level two is only sometimes a good card. But I definitely think it's not like it's not a D. Like it's totally better than a D. Uh... This is really bad against flicker effects. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on. We're skipping Blue red card. until we talk about main deck. What we think is the main deck coming out of the set. So that's why we're going straight yeah, to blue. The main deck is mostly red, plus some yellow standby targets and some, which we're mostly covering. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Yoshino Hermit. It's a zero zero two k. Pay one, tap two. Check up the three cards from the top of your deck. Add a Fantasia or add a character there um, you find to your hand and put the rest in the waiting. Uh, it's a guaranteed plusing engine in a set that uh, might appreciate it. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I can't see this being an incredibly integral part of any deck simply because like, the option to double brainstorm in a standby deck that might want to mill fast is really valuable. Um, so I'd rather play four brainstorms. But as far as guaranteed plusing goes, this is a pretty reasonable version of it. Yeah. Generally speaking, I don't think these profiles see very much play simply because they're competing with brainstorms. At the point, yeah, like they're competing with brainstorms, and then early on, uh, when brainstorms aren't as reliable. They're competing with cards like Oversizers, Runners, Rikis, Climax Combos. That's a good point. And, and Amagis. No. Yeah, and like Amagis. Amagi. Yeah. Amagi digs one card deeper and is in line with your game plan anyway and lets you tap for, for reasons if that is ever important. Yeah. Uh, but later on, uh, when Brainstorms are a bit more reliable, the selectivity of those Brainstorms starts to edge out these cards on average. So while this card is perfectly fine to play, and like, for example... Uh, I could see a back row of, like, this and, you know, the 3-2 Aja being perfectly reasonable. 
I think that if you play any sort of techie back row, like the 1-1 one, one Miku we're going to talk about later, Ooh, then yeah, this hard becomes sell. a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, I think generically, though, like, fine card. Yeah. It's a totally fine card, but as we all know, generically fine cards don't necessarily make it in Weiss. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. All right. Next card, Suzuka, thoughts of her brother. Um, I really can't believe they a third cheap um, series. Uh, but at least this is only, is this? like, this is my sister, my writer. I... Yeah, don't think too hard about it. It's... I'm looking up right now. Uh, I think this is actually worse than Eromanga Sensei. Is that... Uh... That's not this. This is not that. That yeah, is. My sister, my is. writer, known in Japan as what I just read. Okay. The one, cool. literally, the one whom I love is my little sister, but she's not a little sister. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. A, enough mocking. What a stupid like, title. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's stop mocking the poor title. <laughs> Um, and let's 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 focus on the reasonable brainstorm we have in front of us. Uh, sure, it's, this it's, is a it's, it's a, a good brainstorm. Yeah, it's a fine brainstorm. To so pay one, self tap to search for any Fantasia Bunker or novel, and then on climax trigger gives something one k. Um, the climax trigger part is nice, but certainly not it's mandatory not or necessary. They, I feel like people see the one k and they might think, oh, well, that's. I, th this kind of effect is usually it looks better than it actually turns out to be i think like yeah. so i think there are several like 500 power effects that more consistently activate are like mm. better than this like climax trigger effect for the most part we're also we're also in the age of weiss where your deck either knows exactly what it needs to get over opposing things yeah or it's too small like it's too small to bother competing and a fairly RNG heavy effects like this is yeah. not really what you want to look You can't towards. really plan this card. Yeah. yeah, not really. Like, back when Railgun was prominent, for example, you could rely on shit like this. But right now, against. Mm. Uh, the, the Brainstorm card effect is pretty good, though. Yes. Uh, we can talk, we can, the rest of this discussion needs to be had around why this Brainstorm isn't commonly seen mm -hmm. in every deck. Although I do think there's like a bit of a split going on now. I don't know. I think it's as people realize mm -hmm. that standbying out at level zero is not actually that good. Uh, you might make the move to this card. But especially because I or think... you play the uh, yellow brainstorm. Yes, that's a standby at level one, at level zero brainstorm. <laughs> it's, it's a really, really, really. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> I, I personally think that the blue one is fine simply because it fixes for blue, um, as opposed to being red. Billion. Next card is uh, Sistine, Passion for Magical Talent. This is a 0025. When it's reversed in battle, you can check top three. Uh, if you do, choose a Fantasia Bunko from among them and put it to hand. Rest and discard a card. Uh, this is a three or four of in basically every deck. It's fast mill. It um it is a two five, which is like a pseudo oversize in some instances, and uh, it's a good <laughs> discard outlet in the early game. I'm, you know, it's it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this card. I think it is a serviceable B. Or you know what? I'm gonna put the brainstorm. Ah, uh, I'm gonna put this B minus. This is a serviceable effect. It's like. Um, perfectly serviceable. Yeah, it's just fine. Yeah, it also like the the mill is very useful in standby simply because yeah. it gives you more standby. Battle targets. phase mill to boot. Um, yeah, um, which uh, can be useful in getting you an extra standby target. Uh, it'll probably come up one in every ten plus games, but when it comes up. All right, next card is Rumia, Soft Smile. Uh, this card, I think, is really good. Uh, it's a 001k that has, when you play it from hand to stage, you may pay one and ditch a character. If you do, look up the four cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one among them and add it to hand, then move the rest away. Quite so, good. This card is sick and standard, but we don't have to talk about it. 
because the, the secondary trade it asks for is a very common one. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, man. This in Shaman uh, is like... It's broken. Okay. <laughs> it, is really, uh, it is really good. Um, but like in sta 8 standby, this gets you a standby climax, hopefully. And it gets you... Um, a, it's a discard out for your standby type. Mills 4, so you might get a standby and there. Uh, and you can find all sorts of cool things in the top uh, four cards. And innate standby, that's usually a standby. Or, or uh, this, is... this standby deck also runs events. So um... Yes, but um, this card's biggest like reason to exist is allowing you to play more standbys on average than the other yeah. eight standby deck, which is, I think, an incredible strength of the deck. And even though I don't think very highly of the deck itself, I recognize that playing a lot of standbys... Not is... just... Uh... Not just playing it, but uh, I mean, essentially, kind of. You, you, so you either get a standby off this card, or you end up triggering standbys yeah, yeah, that are you deeper so in your deck. Yeah, because you're milling with this card. It's this. this so it's like a. It's like kind of like a win-win for a standby deck uh, when you play this card. Yeah. I don't uh, know if that's like. You don't know the order of your deck, so that's not really. A... No, I mean objectively, you're just looking through more cards. Because yeah, yeah, you're, you're looking through from... more cards in your deck in a way that basically uh, increases your chances of being able to use a standby, is what I mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I can. It's, yeah, it's, that's certainly... It's just a good card all around. I, I think that it's uh, low-key one of the best cards in the set, and I'm... Um, it's very frustrating when people just play it, and I know that. Hmm. Alright, let's move on. Next card. Uh, origami and Kurumi. Uh, this is a 3-2 heal, which is you know, nice. And it also comes with a very potent effect. Up to once a turn, you can pay 5 ditch 2 to stand this card. Uh, so it's that expensive because you can do it every single turn. And it doesn't and require a reverse as well. Yeah. You, you can, it can just kill itself on a level stand anyway. Um, so it's a really powerful generic finisher comes on a heal. Um, the fact that it's just a heal is really good as well. Uh, I think... And you certainly... So, the fact that it can be done any, every turn is pretty good, mainly because you can, like, play it for a heal first, and then, you know, if it survives... If it survives, You can you use can... it as a, yeah. It's also good because um, this sort of timing like it could very easily have been on attack because if you do then you may stand this at uh, um, whatever. yeah but this timing is good because it tells you whether or not it's worth going for if they mm -hmm. cancel probably not worth going for um or if they you know if they can like sometimes you're desperate and it doesn't matter but i think having the option at that time is much better than otherwise especially because this means you've had the chance to build stock with it and possibly tr trigger a, a pants or something um, but this does go in the 8th stand. Okay, don't get me wrong. Uh, Alright. Next card is Sistine, white dress. Um, it, it just, it's a free 2 10k. Play it from hand to stage. Bounce character on your opponent's side to hand. This gains 2k power. And then it has a restand combo. Um, on reverse, you can pay to discard a 1-0 Sistine. You do uh, with the points in the climax zone. If you do, you can stand this card. Oh, it's the... that's not the important part. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's I don't know if it's pants. I don't know if it's, it's pants. That's it's not pants. the important it's part pants. of this card. Yeah, yeah. The important part is um. Uh, her ring is on the wrong finger, and that really. <gasps> oh no, no. It is. Oh no, that's that's not that's not. Is that the ring? No, that might not be the ring. That might be the thing that holds your um. That holds the arm brace to the, to the hand. Mm. Anyway, uh, this is a, this is a bouncer. It's becoming more and more necessary to have this between Fate, uh, Remnants of Al Buddha, Remnants of Hina Logi, um, this deck, any sort of standby deck that plays three two supports, uh, any sort of neg two soul deck like re zero. Uh, basically, these cards are wait. That's the card that is? Oh, yes. yeah, it is the zero, 0 My bad. Yep. So, um, 
this card is fine. It's a serviceable bouncer. I think people overvalue bouncers at this point in time, uh, especially because a lot of decks that aren't exactly our Buddha or Fantasia need multiple bouncers to really have a game-changing effect. Uh, as it stands, playing only one is usually not strong enough because you're teching a game plan against their main game plan. But this card is fine. Like it's a, if they only have one, for example, this can be a B. One is in next solo. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we come to the first card that was spoiled for this set, I believe, and one that a lot of people were immediately hyped about. Until they played the card and realized it was like, eh, Seriously? whatever. Yeah, people were really hyped about this. 3-2 mm. um, Kurumi. Um, well, it's partially because it's a popular character. Oh, I and see. And because the art is nice and the climax is nice. But, uh, when you play her, you can pay one. If you do, search your deck for a copy of this card, put it on any slot on stage. So it clones itself, just like Sagiri Yuragi Sir. Uh, and when it's attacks, if you have a pants in a climax zone, you get to do one of two actions. If you have two or fewer cards in your pot, choose up to one card in your waiting room, return it to your deck, so you can climax, obviously, and then shuffle your deck. So if you have, uh, if you're at 3 0, for example, then you're adding cancels to your deck, which is neat. Fits with her, her whole theme of stuff. And but if you have three or more cards in your clock, so if you are in a more dire situation, you weren't able to get healers, and this card notably does not heal. If it healed, then I think mm, like if this if this was say a three would a be... three two four K mm. that had heal and this clone <laughs> effect, I feel like this could be a really strong card. That uh shades of the uh, made Mio. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, no, no, no. Well, if if it healed from its own effect, then yes, I agree. That would yeah, be insane. Yeah. Uh, That's what but, I'm saying. That's what I'm um, talking about. So the problem with um, sorry, I haven't even talked about the second. Effect. If you have three or more cards in clock, your opponent mills bottom four cards of their deck, and then takes X damage where X is the number of climaxes they milled that way, and then this gains three. So. Icy Tail was a, um, the Michiru in Saikano was pretty prominently played before set 2 came out. And while it wasn't a particularly good finisher, it was like, you know, average to above average. The reason it could be considered good was one, it was on a healer, so it healed down to 3 0. And two, it was completely free. Now, you're never going to be able to use this like Michiru because you won't be able to heal down to 3 0 and get Icy Tail, which is one of the remarkable parts about that card. But, on the other hand, Mitru is not a card that will ever add climaxes back to your... Mm. I don't... I don't think this card does enough. I think, I think the that's... issue is of, like, a lack of clock control. Like, if you could more easily decide uh, when you wanted to use either effect... Uh... Well, uh, look, I don't it, it, think that's the issue. I really well, don't like, think that's well, the like, issue. Well, like, the cost of using this finisher effect is that you have to be at 3-3 three, three or higher. That's that's not very difficult. Uh, I just don't think it's very good. Well, no, it's it's not good. Like, for example, you if you are, say, at 3-2, all you need is the Amagi. Uh... If, if you are at 3-1, then... All you need is to play over the, um, the Kaname Chidor Kaname Riki and get a mug. Mm. Like that's not the that's not the problem with this card. The problem with this card is that it just does not do enough. Well, I just like, mean that being at you just don't want to have to be at three three. No, no, you don't. But you like this the, finishing the, effect. the facts, like the need, like it's not difficult to do that. It's just not a good thing. Sure, yeah. uh, like ev it's a, uh, it's very clearly all a flavor thing, not a particularly good flavor thing either. Like the cloning thing is definitely a Kurumi thing. The clock manipulation. She doesn't actually manipulate clock. She just, in fact, she is manipulated by the clock. She can only do what the clock tells her to do. So the flavor isn't actually that good. But... Wait, she is. Well, she is like doing what the clock is. Yeah, yeah so she's flavor. not manipulating. 
No, but she's the one who manipulates time. But this, at this point, she has no choice. Oh, like, she. Oh, I see. She is for. She is forced to do whatever your clock tells her to, which is not right, right. what. Okay. Anyway, it's not actually great flavor. The card itself is interesting. It's not strong because it doesn't do enough, and the the fairly like the quote unquote strong things it does do, um, is related less to actual game progression, and more to efficiency, which I think is. At that point in the game, where you kind of want to use your resources to kill your opponents, that's not necessarily what you want to do. So I'm, and especially I'm not if you have to be a three-three <laughs> to use the yeah, efficient like, finishing. Yeah, like again, effect. it's not hard to get to three-three, but that's a risk. It's like if your restand only works when you have six cards in clock, it's not a good card. Yo, even if it's that flavorful. card's the best card in the game. Akane, for sure. A... I'm talking about she's... Kirito, the bro. I'm talking about Akane. Well, Kirito's the original, I... and he's the best. Yeah. Well, that Kirito's actually a good card. That's what I'm saying. Because of its uh, its other effects. <laughs> yeah, it's a... <laughs> it's a healer. <laughs> uh, wait, healer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you wrong, know? Wrong, do you know what Kirito, Kirito I'm talking about? I'm talking about the. I I will. I yes. I'm. You're talking about the one that I only use as a heal and never use it's as the a best card in the game. Clearly. Um. All right. Yeah. The so risk reward for this card is just not very good. Yeah. Well, no. The, the the risk the risk is not high unless you make it high. But then the reward's not good unless the risk is. Low, so. Yeah. Well, the reward's not like, even that good for the risk. Well, no. It, if you're at three zero. There's no risk. You are mitigating risk and getting a reasonable oh, reward. Uh, You're just not... You just aren't winning the game. Probably. Like, you're still punching them uh, for 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Like, the first mode is not negligible. It's it's a fine mode. It's just not... Fair enough. Sure. So, let's go on to the 8 standby deck. Yeah. Uh, this was a boogeyman for a while. It was a deck that beat all other standby decks by virtue of being big and by virtue of having specific support cards that really bent other standby decks out of shape. Basically, the only standby deck that could stand up to it was Overlord, and that's because they want to, you know, they have an, an effect that kills the entire field. And not every standby deck has that. So Fujimi was quite prominent for quite some time. In fact, could you even do that um, against Fujimi? I don't remember if Fujimi... Like mm -hmm. is that card? Does that card require like traits on board or anything? In that case, um, I could look the, that up. What's his name? Rhines. I will also have a look. Um, I don't anyway. think so. No, yeah, probably not. It do doesn't. Sure. So that card just straight up kills Fujimi, but that doesn't matter. Because one deck at a billion. And this had a decent matchup against any field-based standby deck because you were just bigger and you could get even bigger on both your turn and their turn. Uh, notably, uh, I don't think it has a very good matchup against Global Soul decks. Mainly because... I don't think... Yeah, well, it's simply because it eats deck, yeah. and dies. <laughs> and it doesn't yeah, do anything... Like, it doesn't do anything... Um, it has catch Strong enough does have the... to catch... I feel like it doesn't... Like so This isn't a million life situation where that no, deck no, but can be run it, 8 standby. It doesn't but explode. It... Yeah, yeah, but the free the three four events is um it gives you an extra, which is not nothing. Uh, it's just it just can be played around and planned for. I think, which is like I agree the biggest, with that as well. It's the biggest weakness of uh this deck in general. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That that that's fine. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Um, the weakness of this deck is so... it, it's basically a very meta meta uh, meta um, yes. attacking deck. Yeah. So the first card is uh, Kurimu, the student council president. Uh, she's the other brainstorm we've been talking about and is the somewhat more common brainstorm simply because early builds and honestly probably current builds as well play the 1-1 one, one Chizuru. Um, oh yeah, I think, they, I think they still play this on Moth. Yeah, yeah, so the 1-1 one, one Chizuru is um, if you have multiple standby climaxes, you can play uh you can play standby at level zero, get Chizuru out, pay one to stand it, and now you have uh. this one one that gets to farm a little bit, and then your opponent has to either like your opponent will probably dual lane into you, but if you ever cancel at that point, you've gotten a you know, a market advantage. 
Uh, additionally, you can also stand the 2-2 Chizuru, which is a designated climb um, standby uh, target. Uh, that card is a 10k if you have this card on the field, and it can save itself if your whole field is white, which is not likely. So it's actually not just just not really good as a card. Uh, but if you want a two soul beta that you can just pull out and you are happy to play it as a one or two of, then that's an option as well. Otherwise, I think that there's just not really a lot of reasons to play this over the yeah. the blue brainstorm. Maybe you really hate Emoto shows, and that's why you don't play that. Well, and that's, you know, I, I do think just the synergy with the 1-1 one, one makes it worth it, well worth it. It's fine. It's enough, I think. Yeah. Because, uh, like, um, the, the other effect on the blue brainstorm is just not that great. It's not consistent, although it does... No, it's it's not consistent. That's Well, sorry. It's not consistently useful. Yes. Sometimes it'll trigger, and it won't do. Um, yeah, it's a brainstorm. It gets a decent mark from me. Um, yeah. I, I didn't actually know what the 2-2's art was, because I have oh. this deck, but I only, <laughs> I, only, I only have the SP, so... Wow. Um, Reflex. Uh, the SP's lewd. Um, oh. oh, I guess it's... So, uh, the card we is. just talked about, it's a 7-5 if you have a full field, and it has character encore. Uh, this is like the prototypical standby target. It's the last remaining of its kind. Treat it kindly. Um, it's fine. I I think it's like not that lewd. Kept alive. Uh, uh, it's you're right. It's not that lewd, but it's showing some it's very, it's very suggestive. You're just you're just um you're desensitized. Yeah. Um. Uh, yep. So. Not gonna say too much about this. It is a card that's dragged up by uh, um, the brainstorm. Notably, the encore is not tied to any field condition or any condition at yes. all. So uh, that's yes. pretty cool for a card like this. It's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next card, ah. Tomonori. This is this this is a uh, Korean zombies contribution to the meta. Six five. <laughs> oh, this each is a card. Other back... This is a card for yeah, that Korea zombie oh, disc card. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, for each of your other back row characters, it gains 2-5, so it goes to a very healthy 11-5, which is noticeably larger than most standby effects. Yes. Uh, sorry, standby target. Like, most of them are at 10-5 to 11. This is it's like bigger than 500 all of them, bigger. I think. This is like the biggest, yes. I think, right? Yeah, this is the biggest. I, it is enormous. Um, and that in itself is useful from a meta perspective. It's not as good a standby target as a card like... Um, like the green guy from Overlord, because this is all it does. But in terms of what, um, in terms of what this card aims to do, you can't really ask for anything else. This is as simple and vanilla as it gets, and it does its job very well. Yes. So it's uh... like a, it's a it's a it's a B simply because it's the biggest. And it doesn't stop being the biggest because of the next card. And that is valuable. Is this card how far does this card fall if, when it becomes if it if it ever became if it if it ever became not the biggest? Like a B again? It'd go back to being a C, yeah. Yeah. Um but in the context of this deck it'd still be played simply because even if it's not the biggest, even if a twelve K came out, the next card we talk about immediately makes it bigger. Whoa! Um, so this... I mean, these okay. Well, just to level with you, these kinds, mm -hmm. these kinds of effects are like par for the course for standby decks, I think. And I got the name wrong again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is if you play the appropriate climax, which is not unreasonable, you wipe their field. This is a three k pump. Oh right. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. I always forget yeah, about this so effect. Th <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a three two um, Aja. She's a three two support. Gives everything one five. Wait, and then if you does this what if you stand by this out, does everything get fifteen hundred anyways? Yes, it's a continuous. Oh, spell. It's continuous. that's so sick. Okay, have you not played against? This I think deck? I this is like the reason. No, it's big. I haven't. But like, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't. Like, I just forgot about yeah, fair enough. Like this card, honestly, except for yeah, the this global. Is the... I just know it as a global fifteen hundred power card and a healer. It's I, the I just... It's like. The marquee play of this deck is to uh, play the DXD standby, and then your two twos 
are so uber huge that it's nothing can challenge. It's it's fine. Like I wouldn't say it's broken or anything, but again, when you're contesting purely power, nothing beats this. It's also a heal if you want to play it from hand, which is yeah, it adds you know, to this card's uh, ability. The nicest like, gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means you can like draw this card after it's hit the board. And it still gives and you not some feel bad. Yeah, yeah, it's also it's it's on color, which the Simpho Gear and Sao ones can't bear with the most. Um, so yeah. Um, for the record, you can also put this in the front row. He's a two soul beater oh. and still gives all the power everywhere. So it's actually like I see. It does everything that you want a card like this to do, but it's only a dumb power stick. It's it, it's, it's like a battery pack. Yeah, this, this deck is a nice lesson about how deck synergy is really, really just making yeah. deck. Yeah, that power really is a big deal. <laughs> All right, next card is Muse Water Fairy. She's a two K counter. Um, two K counter. Yeah, uh, that's it. Can be your counter of choice. The important part about this is it's costless. That's all. Yes. Like, it's just because you are gonna be competing for the biggest card on the field. Regardless of what happens, you only need a little buff. So when it's like choosing a costless card, it's a perfectly reasonable way to go about this. This card could easily get worse, but at the same time, it could easily be. Uh, next two cards we can just kind of touch over. Sure, yeah, we can talk Minions about them in tandem, I guess. They're both like, like level. The same. They're level two counters. They're two basically. level two counters. Yeah. So the um the record of failed magician one is a three five counter. And the uh, Minatsu is a 2-5 counter that has optional anti-change mm -hmm. text, which can be useful if your opponent is playing something that is too big for you to kill normally on defense. Like that was very like, unlikely, uh, though. The draw phase plus 4k is for example, or uh, Wait, if they play the like phase... Ellie or something. Oh, sure. I mean, but they can't back up that card. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if they attack with something else, or if you just want to get it off. Or whatever. I mean, you're not going to back it up after they've attacked with them. Uh, right? just, you might. It just seems, just seems bad. Like, your card's already got reversed, and you're going to play this card? Yeah, you might. Uh, it just... Uh, if you have a lot... if you Look, this, if, if, you've, if you've been fed, and you have, like, a lot of cards in your hand... I think... Then, yeah, maybe. Uh, I think it's valuable against, like, minus soul counter... I mean, minus soul decks, I think, but, like... I don't know. Sure. The value just seems very like, much lower if you're yeah, going to use this it's, on an Ellie clone or a combo profile, rather. The point is it's an option. It's, it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So these two cards are fine. You play one or both, but not in the high quantity. I think right now you'd rather play Muse, but whatever. Um, next card, Rumia, Tenderness and Strength. It's really nice art. Um, if you have four or more Fantasia, Bunko, or Magic characters, it's Neg 1 on hand. When you play it from hand to stage, you can send a character in your clock to memory, which is cool, yes. And the most meme-worthy part of the card, by far, <laughs> is when you play this from hand to stage, you can pay one, ditch two cards. If you do, double one of your character's power. Sick. Well, it's okay. So double, strictly speaking, double. It's it's not actually doubling because of how various other effects work, but for all sakes and purposes, it's double. Um, I mean, basically, like for wait, all so and like, purposes. uh, does this include? It'll include power pumps, right? Yeah, yeah, power pumps. Okay, okay. So it it's for the turn where X is that character's current power. So yeah, um. It's uh, it's a wait. Does it include that character's power? I think so. Does it include? It should include power pumps because the power yeah, is you know, whatever. Yeah, it definitely does. I don't. The way it's point worded, is, I feel you, like it does. Something gets so big that it kills anything it hits, and the cost to do that is enormous. And I don't think you should be doing it very often. Uh, that I would being agree. Said, it, is, it is a very if, prohibitive if, cost. If, if you absolutely have to get over like a bodyguard or something, or like a like a rewrite situation where they've got double, uh, like a double mm. loot um loot share or something, yeah, and you don't want to be burned, then yeah, maybe. Or like, but um... the point is, 
Reinhardt. <laughs> Reinhardt will run away. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, you force him to run away. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong, but um, that doesn't actually help you. Uh, I guess maybe it does help you if you're like 3 5 or something. Mm. So, yeah, this card is a memory heal early play that also has this other meme worthy ability that you probably shouldn't worry about. I don't think this is flavor. Like, I don't remember this being her power. I think it is, it's, I think it's, it is flavor. Someone maybe told me it's it was. flavor. I don't know, dude. It's been so long since I read this. I, I haven't watched it a bit, so. Um, whatever. Uh, B. B is fine. It is. Yeah. It has the option of. Uh, I'm going to go B minus, actually. B minus. Um, B minus. It's slightly uh... better than a regular heal because of the compression elements, but it's also a small early play. And it's the other effect I don't want to think a thing. <laughs> it can it can uh beat something up. Oh sorry, it helps something yeah. it helps something else beat yeah. something on uh, uh, it often. can. You are <laughs> you are correct. You are absolutely correct. Alright. Next card is and the last card I think is Miku, yeah. the um tempting diva. It's a one one support. It's not really a conventional support because it doesn't do anything on your opponent's turn. But what it does do is it has three startup abilities. The first, tap tap it to give one of your characters 2-5 power. That's enormous. That is one of the biggest costless mm. pumps I have seen in quite it's, some time. It's like Ty, it's basically like uh, Armin? Armin yes. a uh, AOT? The 2-1 also Except, pumps for this much. Yes. Um, but Armin also changes and won't be doing that anymore change. Well, you don't have to but, change, but it also gives Hexproof, which is... You know. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. But then this card also has some other powerful effects that are good in the standby deck. One is you can tap and discard a card in the waiting room. If you do that, you can bottom deck one of your opponent's cost zero or lower characters in the front row. That good? So this can be useful. I mean, it's fine against stuff like P5 and Goblin Slayer, where You'd rather keep hand. You'd rather keep field tempo. Uh, than... I guess it lets you. So it lets you attack with something like chump, right? I guess that's the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's also yeah. It's because until you hit level like two, you're not going to have a fully formed field. Yeah. And if you're going to play a card like the check top four, um, mm -hmm. Boomia, mm -hmm. then you're going to want somewhere to. That's a good point. It's it's not good in terms of value. Uh, you get you... If you and if you don't need the, this is assuming you don't need the power. Yeah, so, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you can usually engineer a situation where you don't need that, and uh -huh. it's the only card that needs to be dealt with in the bottom decked. Um, I can't see that being used super frequently, but it's certainly a fine option to have. Well, this counters AOT. And then it does Funny. mess with AOT. I would say that. <laughs> uh, and then the third effect, which is I think actually pretty good, pay two, tap it to heal one. Uh. So if you. If you get stuck at like level two and your field is all there because they just try rammed or whatever, then you can very easily afford to just do this and mm. attack three times. I think so. If so, like this deck does not spend stock basically. Um, basically, not like the stock it spends is on its level zeros on brainstorms and occasionally hard playing one ones such as this and zero. I think this is well worth spending stock on. Yeah, this it's effect. absolutely so... because um if. If you ram a bunch of cards into this deck, they are going to start healing with this, which is, you know, it might be the idealist situation, but it's also very realistic. It, it will happen. Um, and I think it might be, honestly, it could be the strongest mode on this. If you aren't playing, like, the mirror. Mm. That, that sounds, <laughs> That's so stupid. That sounds like a, so a really bad, bad so, time, to be honest. so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, so um, also I, I very like Miku. likely, depending on where you're playing, where and when you were playing this deck. Right? Yeah, I'm sure um, it was very common at God. one point. And how awful this mirror is. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be the same as the old mirrors, where side attacking is side attacking for zero is <sighs> legitimate um, consideration. Terrible. Anyway, that's um, that is Fujimi. Uh, we're a little late to the party. I think this deck is long past its peak. We're now in the era of sustained decks that don't get destroyed by stock swap completely. Um, uh, which Fujimi 
he's not particularly good. I believe Japan this. is also on the gold bar gravy train right now. Um, so... yes, because Saikano spams gold bars and, and Fate is yeah. gold bars, <laughs> and Love Live has a gold yes. bar, but they they still rate um eight standby decks quite highly. Um, uh, it's just that this has these... like uh the the meta function for this deck, like kind of kind of lost, I think, right now. Yeah, I don't think it beats over enough. Like. When Overlord and other four standby decks and standby SAO were highly like high profile things you'd expect to fight at a tournament, uh, this would be a fine uh, thing to bring against those. But that's just not the case anymore, right? Uh, no, it's not. So it could be um, in the future. I, I mean, like, uh, you know. And it could be the case wherever you play. You being the yeah. viewer, you know. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I agree uh, that it's just going to be not the meta for this deck anymore. No. But it's still a fine deck. And all you have to do is cancel a little bit and then you can take control of the game, slow it down real bad. And um, yeah be fun uh, well that's um I think that's uh kind of the end for a review of uh Ujimi, right unless you want to talk about something no uh, I was just gonna ask if you think what, is it likely that we're gonna go back to any like a standby centric meta in the future uh, uh yes because Japan Japan will not leave eight standby decks alone uh, I if, think it is example, very likely that the Boogeyman gold bar decks are gonna get they're gonna get hit. They're gonna get hit. Point, yeah, and at that Japan point, gonna... people are gonna return to standby decks, and then this deck will be good. Yep. Yeah. So keep an eye out on this deck. It's probably still gonna be fine. If you're the sort of person who likes sitting back and playing massive chunky blockers, then yeah, absolutely a deck to have a look <laughs> at. Um, not really my cup of tea, but <laughs> hey, other people might like it. So. Yeah. Anyway, um. So that was a different format for our set review. Um, comments, questions, anything, yeah. let us know. Uh, if you, you thought, us Discord. thought this set could be presented a better way or more clear way, please let us know. Because we're, we're basically talking about what format... We're basically like shifting formats based on what we think is appropriate for the set. So mm -hmm. uh, feedback will help us mm -hmm. improve, continue to improve our set overview. Um, yeah, and hopefully let us get them out in a more timely yes, fashion, which that, I think has yeah. been. Yes. All right. Um. So thank you again for listening. You can hit us up on Discord or Global, or I I check the Reddit. Do that. Um. And you can comment on this video, of course. Uh. And look with that, I'm not going to ask you to sub or whatever. We're not monetized anyway. But thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. And if you've got any suggestions, let us know. See you in the next one.